<sighs> well, well, well. Here's the thing. I'm going to do my first video addressing directly Alec Baldwin. And it's the first time I'm doing it. And I'm doing it because I saw a video of him on internet published on his social network where he is in his car. And he's giving us all kinds of bullshit explanation <laughs> that ultimately he's going to comply to the warrant to provide his cell phone to Santa Fe, New Mexico, when they're going to do it right, according to what he wants. So he doesn't give his entire, and he said it, so he doesn't give his entire cell phone, but just the thing that they will specifically ask for. So I don't know how New Mexico and Santa Fe will be able to know exactly what to ask for if they don't look for, that's what an investigation is, right? So it's like, it's like if you're a drug dealer and you say to the warrant at the door, oh, well, you're going to have to tell me like what type of drug you're looking for, the amount you're looking for, so I will provide it to you and collaborate. Otherwise, you cannot enter my property and search with your search warrant. That's what a search warrant is. Like, can we cut the bullshit? So, Alec Baldwin has been asked, okay? Well, first, let me go back. He was in Santa Fe and he changed state to return to his family. First thing I have to say by experience, being six months at Rikers Island, if you are poor, if you are black, if you are Hispanic, and if you are a foreigner, they never let you leave the state. He would have been detained pre-trial during the investigation as he would have been seen as a flight risk. But because he's rich and famous, he can get away with it. But you and I, most of the people who don't have $60 million in their bank account, according to what Alec Baldwin said, he said, I'm going to leave $60 million to my wife after I die, blah, blah, blah. Well, that $60 million maybe should go to the family of the people he destroyed their lives, including myself, right? Because you have to understand that in New York, the only thing that got me wrongfully arrested is the lies of a pathological liar that we all know she's a liar, Ilaria Baldwin, and you have the 911 recording tape on my YouTube channel where you can hear her use a fake name to get me arrested. And you have to understand one thing that is very important. If I call to get you arrested and I say, my name is Penelope Cruz or I'm Nicole Kidman, this is a criminal or any name like that is unknown, like any name. Hillary Lynn Edward Thomas, if I say that, right? Um, it is called a criminal concealment. And it is very, it, it's very high on crime level in the United States because it's a felony. So just there, if the police officer and YPD would have asked Hillary Lynn Edward Thomas, the fake Ilaria, to before they arrest me or even engage with me because I was saying, no, that's not true. I'm not a stalker. I know him since more than 15 years. At that time, we have a lot of mutual friends and we work together. Plus, he's calling me all the time. He's sending me texts. He's sending me Facebook. And he is sending me email all the time. And I have emails that I said, okay, you know what? I think you're dating somebody else because I saw you like two, three times with this girl. Uh, so if sometimes, you know, because I'm a publicist on a Hollywood movie. So sometimes, um, you know, they just take a friend to go out or somebody that wants publicity, but it's not serious. And I knew Alec with all the problem he had with Kim Basinger and his divorce resulting in all the problem with Ireland and the phone situation. Um, I knew that this person could be absolutely no one to him or just a contracted person that wants money. 
and our fame. And so he was calling me and calling me and texting me and Facebook me during the period. Like, for example, there's one night he went, the first night they went out officially together. And she had a white dress and he's got a beard. It was some kind of an awkward night. Uh, at 11 o'clock at night, he called me for an hour. So as soon as he got rid of her, first thing he did was to call me. And I have all that in my phone recording. And he's got it on his phone thing too. So, you know, he's saying out loud and clear, oh, I want the truth to come out. I'm going to provide my phone to the authority when they are able to issue a real good warrant. No, it's a search warrant. You were asked in October to give your phone number as a demonstration that you are collaborating. He refused. He said, I will collaborate when you issue a warrant. Then he changed state to make it so difficult because if he was detained as a flight risk, like most of us would be in the United States, it's very abusive, but not for the rich and famous, well-connected. But for him, he changed state. He returned to New York and then he went to Vermont. So it's like Santa Fe wants to look for him in a Magenset in East Hampton or downtown New York. Maybe he's already in Vermont and they're going to have, maybe he's already changed his legal address to the address in Vermont. And if you want to know why they went to Vermont, maybe that's the reason why. They're renting a place in Vermont so he could change his legal address. So they're going to spend like a month or two looking for him in New York. And again, sit and everywhere. The lawyer is going to pretend like a fool that he doesn't know where his client is while they're just playing cat and mouse, enjoying themselves. And then when the warrant expired in New York, they're going to have to reissue a warrant in Vermont to look for him. Because probably his driving license now is in Vermont. Maybe his income taxes are in Vermont. Who knows? And then what? In two months from now, he's going to be in another state. Maybe California. Maybe, you know, he's a flight risk. He's rich and powerful and he can do what he wants because he's very knowledgeable with, with law. So here's the thing. <laughs> I got arrested based on the lies of a crazy malignant, narcissistic, cucumber, Ilaria Baldwin. And I say Ilaria because it's not her legal name. She, we know, because I had an investigator and a lawyer in the United States search and she never changed her name. So if she wants to contract, like buying a house, renting a place, her driving license or income taxes, or if she wants to get married, the every official uh or if she wants to be the officiate of the marriage of her friend danny romanoff their contract of what marriage would be under hillary lynn award thomas not hilaria baldwin so that's her, her legal name as of now if you want to know but who's going to do their job to really research everything unless you're like me, trapped into a situation that results only on the lie of a narcissist and pathological liar. And the way she gets away with things when she's caught lying about her stupid accent and coming from Spain and this and that, is just to continue to lie more. So people on the internet, they see that she lied to cover lies, to cover lies. Like, for example, she pretended she was nursing or having a, a food poisoning this week. If you do that, you're a psycho mom because whatever the poison and bacteria that is in you is transmitting to the newborn through the nursing. So if you have a food poisoning that could be fatal for your, your toddler, your new, newborn child, you do not nurse. But... You know, anyway, so here's the thing. I got arrested based on our lies and that's my dog. And without not even a minute of investigation, I got detained. I got detained because I was not from that state. 
and I was not rich and connected. So they didn't, they pursued me as a potential flight risk, you know, because I was not from New York. So they wanted to make sure they could keep me, control me while they're supposed to investigate, which they never did. But what they did is extremely wrong. And you need to understand that. And that's the purpose here of the video. They took my cell phone without any warrant, without any reason. They took in my purse, they opened my Louis Vuitton purse. They went in it. They took my cell phone. They asked me for the code, which I provided because I didn't say like Baldwin, issue a warrant before, like you're terrified. They have their hands on their gun. You're handcuffed in a police car and then you're detained in the cell and without not, not knowing what's going on because she, a psychopath I never met. I never spoke with her. She called 911 lying about her name, doing a criminal concealment, which is a felony. And nobody investigate like the NYPD, they don't take her license, a driving license and say, well, that's not, that's not your legal uh, residence address. That's not your legal name. So you cannot apply accusation on her. So that's the law. So the police officer, they, they open my purse, which is absolutely invasive and illegal. They took my cell phone. They asked me for the code. And I provided because I was really not doing anything wrong or anything illegal. And I said, I, I, will, I, I, I was not assisted by any lawyer. And they were saying to me that I was not under arrest, that they were just waiting for Alec Baldwin to call back to verify my, my saying that we know each other, that we are in communication, that I'm not a stalker, that I was, you know, working with him, that we have a lot of mutual friends, on and on and on. So I provided the code for them to check in my cell phone so they would see that the same day I had text exchange with Alec Baldwin, that I had Facebook exchange and email exchange on top of many back and forth phone conversation with Alec Baldwin. I thought that would have cleared the problems, right? So they detained my cell phone illegally without any warrant in New York under Alec Baldwin friend Andrew Cuomo and Eric Schneiderman. Andrew Cuomo is the was the governor of New York and Eric Schneiderman was such a good friend of Alec Baldwin that he did his inauguration speech as an attorney general of New York. So what was my chance to get a fair trial or good proceeding and not be abused? Zero. They detained illegally with no warrant my phone with adding the, the access code in it so they could see that I was saying the truth on day one and they knew it. <coughs> so it took me two years to get my phone back. And I could not defend myself at trial and proving my saying because they detained my phone illegally without any warrant. And they, I went many times at the NYPD and attorney's office in New York. Can I get my phone back? Can I get my phone back? You had like six months to look, to verify whatever you want to verify in it. Can I get my phone back? Cause I'm going to need it to establish my truth at trial. Because the, they were saying I was a stalker. The only way I could have not been charged and guilty would be to, to demonstrate in my phone that he was calling me. To demonstrate in my phone that he was Facebook me, sending me all kinds of messages. I had the date, the time, so I could prove, you know? I could prove the emails. I could prove all the communication back and forth. And with that proof, I cannot be charged as a stalker. I could not all also be charged as being harassing him because he's the one inviting me. And there's a text that he said, I'm doing Equus at, uh, in new, um, in uh, East Hampton, uh, theater and you're most welcome to come. 
And I said, oh yeah, I, I could rent like a place. Uh, maybe there's like, like some charming place I could stay in East Hampton, like a hotel or no, you're most welcome to come in my property and this and that. So just that text and that email, actually that was an email in my phone. <laughs> it's enough to make sure I would have never been detained. I would have never been wrongfully convicted and that 10 years afterwards, which is 10 years now, my life would have not been totally destroyed by the worldwide vilification in the press labeling me as a stalker. You have to understand that they made sure I could not get my cell phone that they detained without giving it to me back in New York under Alec Baldwin close friend, Andrew Como, Eric Schneiderman, and they refused for me to present the phone at trial. My lawyers, Todd, Sp Todd, Todd Spodek, or any of the lawyers prior, could have just issued a subpoena so we could have get the phone back as it was illegally detained. They never did. Because a free lawyer that is pro bono do not want to work. He wants to use his client for publicity. So if it's a Gillen Maxwell uh, high profile um, trial like mine, like Gillen Maxwell, like any like NBA football player, basketball player thing, people like Todd, Todd Spodak wants to be involved for free as a pro bono lawyer, but they don't want to work because work requires subpoena, follow through, phone call, doing your work. And they're not getting paid as a, a paycheck, but they're getting paid as being in the news, being in Vanity Fair, like my first lawyer, Morris Sarkaz, that forbidden me to speak with the, the press, which I would have said, well, they detained my phone, they had no warrant, blah, blah, blah. You know, I could have told enough for the press to not see me as a stalker, but he didn't want me to speak with the press, so he would have a high interest in my case, enough for him to promote himself and his firm in a like two, three page Vanity Fair article about him as a good lawyer pro bono. He never left a finger to help me. None of my lawyer have, has ever subpoena any witness or any in information. Like we could have subpoena and I asked, Supina Alex cell phone because you're gonna see that it's not just in my phone but it's on the receiving end of Alec Baldwin's cell phone. So if we could have had any decent lawyer, any decent defense to subpoena the Alec Baldwin cell phone at that time as it was in New York, so it would have been easier than what they're trying now with the New Mexico, New York. So you have to understand that I hear Alec Baldwin in his car saying, well, they're gonna have to issue a warrant for me to collaborate, which he's got no intention to collaborate, so I can give them what they want so they don't see the love letters I sent to my wife. They had my phone, they saw everything, and I had nothing to hide. And they made sure I could not get my phone at trial to defend my rights. So I was wrongfully convicted by Alec, by Alec Baldwin's friend, Andrew Como and Eric Schneiderman, that now today we, they lost their job and they're both under criminal charge for abusing women. So, you know, and then the first thing you know is that Alec Baldwin is defending them as well as uh, Woody Allen and people like that in the news like, oh no, uh, you know, nobody should be canceled. I, I stand by Andrew Como. I stand by Eric Schneiderman. Of course, he owe them a favor. And you wanna know why? Because if I had my phone that was detained with no warrant in New York, if I had my phone, I could have been not wrongfully convicted, so I would have been innocent. And then the media would have asked, then what happened? How come? This happened, and I would have said, because I knew at that time, and she knew that I knew, and that's why she called the police. I knew she was a fraud and a liar. I knew everything about her, and it's also in the exchange of email 
and Facebook communication in between Alec and I, I'm like, well, this, this is wrong about her. This is not her name. This is not, she's not Spanish. She's, and he knew about it that I know. And maybe she was like picking Alec phone and like reading, you know, cause some people do that. Anyway, she would have been held accountable for calling 911 if I was going to be innocent at trial. So that's why Alec Baldwin owes a favor to Andrew Como and Eric Schneiderman. Well, they're not in place anymore. So he changed and he went to rent a place in Vermont. So maybe he could change his legal address. Maybe it's already done since the time, like October, November, December, we're in January. And he's doing everything he can to make sure that whatever warrant they're going to end up issuing in Santa Fe won't apply to him because... He won't be a New Yorker anymore. He will be in Vermont. Only extremely rich people can do things like that. I gave, like they took my phone and I gave the code in it in a full transparency so they could see I was telling the truth. And more they knew I was telling the truth and more they knew this was an injustice more they apply problems on me and detention and difficulty and abuse because if I had not listened to Morris Sirkaz, my first lawyer, and spoke to the press, the truth would have come out. But I was a rookie. I was in total shock. I was experiencing high level of PTSD to be detained, arrested, a mug shot, my fingerprint, like it's, it was humiliating. I lost all my work contract. I lost everything. I lost my family that day. You know, I lost most of my friend that day. Um, I, I ended up homeless with no address, with nowhere to stay. The, the one particular night I came, I drove back from New York. It was in the winter. Uh, and I came home and my mother, I changed the law, which I was saying in our guest room. Like she was like, okay, you know what? I don't want the stalker in my house because the New York Post was like in front of her house in their car day and night. They were following her to the bank. They were following her to grocery, um, like many other paparazzi. American ones, like like the New York Post spend like three weeks, day and night in their car in front of my mother's house. And um, she needed, she didn't do it right. And that was resolved later on, but she couldn't deal with the situation anymore. So she kicked me out. And I ended up at like midnight or two o'clock in the morning from New York in the snow, in my car with no place to go. It won't happen to the Baldwins. Like they have enough money to deflect the warrant. So I just wanted to tell you this because you understand that if you're not rich and famous, if you're black, if you're Hispanic in the United States, or if you're a foreigner with a French, a real genuine French accent, you have no chance for justice. They opened my purse, they took my phone and with a lot of intimidation and the hands on the gun, they said, give me your, and I said, can I get a lawyer? They said, no, you're not under arrest. So you're not getting a lawyer. I said, can I get a phone call? You know, no, you're not under arrest. So we're not giving you your lawyer or your phone call. We're investigating. I was in a cell and cough, unable to call a lawyer, unable to call my embassy unable to have a translator and they took my phone and my purse as well as all my money if you want to know the truth they took all my money from my my wallet that I never got back so it's been it's been extremely painful it's been against all my human rights and for Alec Baldwin it's like they left him leave the state where he killed someone. Like, technically, I haven't done anything wrong. And I haven't done anything illegal. 
I was never rich enough to prove it at trial where Todd Spodek never even worked a day as a lawyer. No supina, no expert, no nothing, and not even my phone to prove that conversation. So I, I, I have to admit, I, up to now, I still have very serious question about either his ability to be a lawyer or he was paid by the other by the other group you know so i don't know which one it is but that's the truth i would never recommend Todd spodak or morris sarkaz to no one as they only work in their own interest towards their own objective to promote themselves and speak to the press and be seen in the press so they become bigger lawyer more well known so they can charge more and get more high profile clients on high profile trial like the jury on Gillian Maxwell and so they can you know make a fortune out of my misery while they're not defending me while they're not issuing supina to get my phone that is detained without warrant so my phone is detained without warrant and Alec Baldwin's got warrant and he's not giving the phone my message is for eventually maybe the FBI or because it, it could end up escalating to get the phone or to the Santa Fe investigator when they're going to end up, if they do end up getting Alec Baldwin's phone. Look for my case. And please, whatever Alec Baldwin had had in this phone or on his iCloud, because they could also subpoena directly the iCloud if Alec changed state with the physical phone. They just have to subpoena in California, the iCloud company, and get a copy of everything that is in Alec's phone. And they will see that it leaves a trace, right? It's impossible to totally erase everything from iCloud or from a phone. So, and even if it's a new phone, he makes a, a, a he saved the continent and then because after 10 years you assume that Alec Baldwin upgraded his phone at I, I, Apple or something so what he does is he saved his phone and just like everybody else on the iCloud and then he buys a new phone and he brings all the content like phone numbers and all the things like pictures whoops and, and pictures and this and that. So whatever was there 10 years ago about me, photos, Facebook, text, email, and phone conversation could be fine today by Santa Fe, New Mexico in Alec Baldwin's phone. And I'm wondering, isn't it why he's not giving the phone? Because it proves my crime and it would make him accountable for the crimes and the criminal lies of Ilaria Baldwin that we all know now she's a liar. Do you think like a person that lies about her name using a Spanish accent for 10 years, pretending to come from Spain and paella and hola and a, like psycho, you know? Don't you think she would lie against an innocent she never met? So the person goes to jail. Well, this, my injustice, promoted her as a known person in the news because before that she was just Alec Baldwin's girlfriend. N nothing to talk about. And then she became the victim. And by promoting herself at extra to give interview, pretending she was afraid of me and this and that, she took the role as the victim of the stalker and that gave her the stepping stone to become known on her own and make books and make yoga um, videos and DVDs and all that. So it's like she used my injustice to get rid of a rival. That's what, that's what she believed. And she promoted herself with all those lies to make money. And that's all she talks about is money, 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 money. There's much more than money. The, the truth, like our lives is much more valuable than money. Um, 
anyway so you you see now the difference in between they took my phone with no warrant oh i had to pay to get my phone back it was so difficult and complicated that i that would be a video in itself <laughs> And they just made sure all that was just to make sure I could never use my phone to demonstrate my innocence during my trial. And Todd, Todd Spodak, my uh, free lawyer, as well as Morris Sarkaz, they never ask to have the phone. They never subpoena to have the phone. They never even mention the phone. And I was like, mention the phone, mention the phone. And everybody was telling me, you cannot talk. Only your lawyer can talk. Yeah, but he's not doing a good job. He's not telling you the, the things that's going to make me innocent. And that's what it is. I had this, this bad person as a lawyer that had, either was the worst lawyer on earth or he had an interest to make sure he was not disturbing the court under Andrew Cuomo and Eric Schneiderman because he's going to continue to be a lawyer attorney in New York. And during that time, Andrew Cuomo and Eric Schneiderman were continuing to be governor of the states and attorney general of the state that he had to behave if he had burned all his bridge to defend my truth while he's not paid to do so. How would he live as a lawyer in New York for the next following 10 years under Eric Schneiderman and Andrew Cuomo? And so he had no capacity to truly defend me. Either no capacity or no capacity, but he didn't. And um, so, you know, my cell phone was detained and Alec Baldwin's gonna move state and change places and go to Vermont. I'm telling Santa Fe or the FBI just subpoena directly in California, the iCloud. This is going to take more, less than a month. You're going to get all the information and maybe he's got more than one iCloud, so be aware. <laughs> and you're going to get everything, everything, all the contract, maybe with my lawyers and it, maybe some picture of myself in it, on and on and on. Because that's what I'm certain Alec Baldwin do not want to provide. That's why he, he's like, oh, you have to subpoena very precisely what you're looking for. So you don't see the other case that we, we killed. They killed me. That, I was killed. The, the woman I was got killed in that injustice. So, if you're rich and famous, you do what you want. If, if you're not, they, they take your phone directly in your purse, your money as well. And you have no saying. And then you're not rich enough to get lawyers like Harvey Weinstein, like retainer's fee of half a million dollar US. So you get shit lawyers like, <laughs> like Todd Spodak and Morris Sarkaz and, and people that wants to promote their firm and themselves at your depend because it doesn't they don't care about justice and they don't care about the truth and they're not there to work for you. They're there to take advantage of your vulnerable state because let's remember if NYPD had just done their job when they came to Alec Baldwin's apartment while I was outside on the street at four o'clock in the morning. It's not like I was inside with a crowbar trying to enter. No, no, no. I was outside walking my two pound dog peacefully at four o'clock in the morning, at, at four o'clock in the afternoon with the text saying, oh, I'll pass by. Could you want to come for a coffee? You know, everything absolutely normal. But what was not normal was the psychopath upstairs. Hillary Lynn Award Thomas called 911 with a fake accent, with fake name, fake reality. Everything is distorted in that psychopath world. If the NYPD had to do a diligent job and take her, her 
an ID, like it could have been a passport or it could have been just a driving license, they would have said, well, that's not your legal address. Your legal address is this. And no, you did not change your address legally. So it is what it's written on the driving license, not what you want to create as a lie. And that's not your name. The name you left on the 911 recording was Ilaria, and now it's Hillary Lynn. So you cannot use criminal concealment to make somebody be wrongfully detained, wrongfully arrested, and wrongfully convicted. But she did, and she came to my trial, and she testified under that same non-legal name, not that address, was not her legal address. And that's perjury on oath. So it's like up to seven years of jail in the United States and it's a felony. So who's the real criminal in the story? So maybe that's why Alec Baldwin does not want Santa Fe to get the cell phone or the I iCloud because he does not want to reopen my case that's gonna expose maybe some email exchange with Andrew Como, maybe some conversation text with Eric Schneiderman Maybe it's all in the phone. Let, I hope so. And then I'm gonna finish on this. Alec Baldwin said, oh, I want the truth to come out and I, it was the worst day of my life and I, I wish for nothing but the truth to resolve in, from this investigation. I do too. So I wish, I wish with all my heart that whatever they find in Santa Fe about my case, about Alec Baldwin stalker, about the link, the conversation with Andrew Como, Eric Schneiderman, my maybe conversation with Todd Spodak, my lawyer, I would not be surprised at all that those conversations between Alec Baldwin and Todd Spodak exist in Alec Baldwin's phone. Uh, one last thing, um, Morris Sorkas told me that he met with Alec Baldwin, which I asked him to meet with Alec Baldwin lawyer. And he came back like a, to me like a week or two after and he said, I met with Alec Baldwin. And I said, I assume you mean Alec Baldwin lawyer. He said, no, no, I met with Alec Baldwin. And then from that moment, I had no defense to my, to my case anymore. Nothing was done anymore to prevent an injustice against an innocent. Did he get some payment? Did he get some advantage? It's all in Alec Baldwin's cell phone and iCloud. So imagine if he killed someone and he's not providing the cell phone and he's not collaborating with legal subpoena and warrant issue and he's pretending he is but if they do it right and they took my phone my only chance for justice to defend myself and to establish the relationship with Ali and the fact that I like the real nature of the relationship so what's an Alex phone do you write it down tell me what's an Alex phone photo of me Conversation with my lawyers, conversation with Eric Schneiderman, Andrew Como. Because you have to understand, I asked many times at New York to change the venue so I could be outside of New York, right? So outside of Andrew Como and Eric Schneiderman influence on my trial, anywhere. But best would have been closer to Montreal, right? Um, they refuse. And it was my right to be defend and feel safe and, and feel that I have an equal access of justice. And I never did. So what's an Alec Baldwin cell phone? You can write it down and perhaps we'll know. It would be wonderful to establish that he spoke with, with Morris Sorka and what was the nature of that? Was it including payments? I'm sure it is. <laughs> Same thing with Todd Spodek that is like the worst lawyer you can ever have in your life. So uh, what's in it? What's an Alec Baldwin cell phone? Like photo of me? Did he keep some conversation? Did he keep some text? Did he keep some Facebook? I would not be surprised, actually. I would not be surprised. And I know one last thing, if, if uh, Santa Fe wants to know that Alec Baldwin record every conversations uh, from his house. 
So if you want to subpoena something, <laughs> as, even including like the, 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 the Santa Fe conversation, he records, he record all the conversation from his hard line at home. So that could serve to free me as well as establishing his implication in the murder. Because that's a murder, right? Somebody got killed. I never killed anyone. I, and, and I never did anything wrong. So here's what it is when you're rich and famous versus when you're black, you're Hispanic, or you're a foreigner with a French accent, a genuine French accent. Okay, so let's see what you believe that we can find an Alec Baldwin cell phone. And let's hope we do. Bye.